Hey guys, sitting here waiting for my daughter to get out of her after school program. I was thinking about this function I was at a few weeks ago. They're, they were giving their testimony and they were talking about Christ, of course. During that presentation, kind of in the middle, I started to feel an evil spirit creeping up, an oppressive spirit, a spirit of fear. I wasn't really sure what the spirit was about, but it, it kind of just started growing. I felt it for about 20 minutes in the middle of this presentation about someone who had lived a Christian life and they were kind of espousing the principles of Christianity and why it's a good idea, right? The core values of Christ. The main thing though that I thought was interesting was some parts of the message were good and then there was this part of the message where there was an evil spirit involved with some of the ideas that were being presented. Everybody else around was applauding and it was so good. And of course, this was a more conservative crowd. I live in the South, I live in the Bible Belt, right? But it was like, I was the only person, as far as I can tell, that had a sense that some of the things being said were coming from an evil spirit or they the, some of the ideas were enforced by a spirit there was definitely a spirit of fear and so as I was thinking back about some of the things he was saying there was definitely a fearfulness about the culture and where the culture is headed and how we need to try to get back to Christian values but there was a spirit an evil spirit of fear in the midst of that particular part well the real thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is it's important to have people that are spiritually sensitive. Like on the surface, guys, we can hear good messages, good sermons, good presentations, good testimonies. They can sound Christian. They can use the right Christian lingo. They can use scripture. It can come from the Bible. They can seem like good conservative Christian truths, but they can still have components and parts of them that are not from Christ that come from an evil spirit. It's important to be able to make that distinction. I think it's not everyone's gift to be able to discern the spirits or have spiritual discernment. I think every church would do well to have at least one or two people that have that kind of spiritual sensitivity. This, this is why I started my website, The Modern Contemplative. My mission is a contemplative in every church. Why? Because every church should have someone who is spiritually sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When you grow in your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, you will become more sensitive to evil spirits. It's just part of it. I, I'm not saying every person should do that, should seek that. Uh, I didn't seek that. I did not seek to be sensitive to evil spirits. I was seeking the Holy Spirit. I had no idea that, that was a part of it. I don't know if I would have sought a deeper sensitivity to the Holy Spirit if I knew it came with that dark side. Although now, having come through some of the harder lessons of becoming spiritually sensitive and being awakened to the kingdom of darkness alongside the kingdom of light, I'm very thankful that I have that sensitivity. I can come into a situation, I can sense the spiritual atmosphere as the spirit leads me and allows me, right? I'm not in control of it, which is good. I don't feel every time there's an evil spirit, I'm not aware of everything going on in the spiritual atmosphere around me. But guys, here's the question. How do you know when your church, your pastor, a Christian leader is presenting to you things truly from the spirit or at times things mixed and intermingled with things from an evil spirit? You cannot know that unless you're spiritually sensitive. It's important guys to have one or two people in every church that's spiritually sensitive that can say, hey, I felt the spirit of fear when you were preaching on that or talking about that. I, I felt an evil spirit of this or an evil spirit of that. We all have different gifts from the Holy Spirit. Not everyone is meant to have that kind of spiritual sensitivity. But if you don't have it in your church, you can be teaching good things that sound like good Christian things, but they could be intermingled with doctrines of demons, with ideas from Satan. Satan has his own Christian ideas, guys. He has his own interpretations of scripture, okay? Trust me, we see it in the Bible. It's true in your church today. It's true in your Christianity today. 
it's important to be able to make those distinctions. I don't think a lot of churches have someone who's spiritually sensitive. I don't think every church has a contemplative. I think every church should have a contemplative. So, here's something to consider. You can consider becoming a contemplative or encouraging your church leadership to make room for a contemplative. It's important. It's important to be able to distinguish the spirits in the midst of our truth seeking and our truth speaking. There's a lot in church today that's not good, right? And we're all scratching our heads. We don't get it, right? We're, we're Bible, we're Bible believing, Bible teaching churches, and yet something isn't right and something's not going right, and people are rejecting church. And it's not all the fault of the culture, it's the fault of us. It's because we have forgotten some of the things that we need as a church, some of the giftings that are necessary to discern what is truly of God and what is not. So, a contemplative in every church, right? Contemplation seeks the fruits of the Spirit more than the gifts. It also seeks to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit for the sake of relationship, not for the sake of some kind of gift that can bring me glory or make me look more important, right? Contemplation is quiet. It's a quiet seeking of God through communion, through silence, through prayer. It does give one the ability to discern spiritual environments, right? It's a very quiet kind of gifting. It'd just be great, guys, if you had a group of people or a couple people in your church who are clued into the spiritual environment and the spiritual health of your church and can say, hey, there's this going on. When you that This past Sunday, there were these spirits present. Or every Sunday for the last two years, we've seen these particular evil spirits showing up. There seems to be this kind of evil spirit of this in our church, and we need to deal with that. We need to start to pray. We need to start to understand. Maybe we are aiding and abetting that evil spirit. We need to understand why there might be a continual visitation of a certain kind of evil spirit in your in a church, in your church, right? So you could start to dispel it and make room for the Holy Spirit. Guys, wherever there is spiritual oppression, there is a squelching of the spirit, right? Because the spirit won't push us. If we are making room for evil spirits through our teaching, our understanding, our doctrines, our practices, we're, we're, we're inviting a spiritual conflict into our church and we're in a essence putting the Holy Spirit in the corner in some ways and that's not good right it's important to have spiritually sensitive people I think contemplatives bring that spiritual sensitivity in a more conservative way right now everybody's gonna really like the Pentecostal flavor and the things that go along with that that's fine a contemplative is not a Pentecostal they're not wanting to come in and run run up and down the aisles and smack people in the forehead to knock them to the ground and like all that stuff they're quiet they can pray concerning spiritual things concerning the spiritual atmosphere they can be combating evil spirits and evil darkness in the church in individual churches and i think that is important it's something that i think we've lost it's something we need to find regain and recover all right every church needs a contemplative Every contemplative needs a church. A contemplative in every church is a great idea. <laughs> All right, see you guys.